Yeah, I wrote this blog post about 18 months ago, and it was titled, In Two Years, Nobody's Gonna Be Looking for AI Startups, right? And at the time that I wrote it, it was sort of like, what, he's lost his mind. I had a partner write sort of the end of cloud computing, Peter Levine, sort of same thing, which is, look, AI is gonna get into every single application that we write, um, and it'll be mandatory part of the set of computer science techniques you've been into all of your software, right? It's not gonna be AI or not AI. Of course, you're gonna have AI. Um, and so what we're looking for now is uh, the vertical companies, because the platform companies are gonna have a, what we think is a stranglehold on the platforms, and let me come back. So let's put a bookmark on that, and I'll explain why we think the horizontal companies will have a hard time. So we're looking for the vertical companies, and. My advice to people who are building these vertical AI companies is, let me express it this way. If you have a, sl uh, a deck where you're doing fundraising, you have a choice about how much to budget to each of your sections. And on one section, you can talk about the fantastic recurrent neural networks that you've built into the thing that leads to like, look at this area under the curve, it's beautiful, right? One slide, no more. Right? The temptation is to have like that be 15 slides and here's the novel technique and here's how this area in the curve is like fantastic and look at the false positive rate and here's a novel architecture. The problem with that is that's not the hard part. And I'm not discounting the awesomeness of the technology, but like technologies like AutoML where we're gonna automatically search the architecture space of neural networks is going to make that less of a differentiator. On the other side and spend a lot of slides on this is how do I bottle up this technology and take it to market? How do I solve enough of a problem to command enough of a price so that I can afford the go-to-market motion that I need to sell my product? And so this spend a lot of time on, right? Because we see, even in Silicon Valley, this is where a lot of companies fall down, which is my price isn't high enough to afford the go-to-market motion, right? And it's not intuitive for an entrepreneur to think that my price needs to be high enough to afford a sales motion, but like that's the whole, like that's the difference between having a business and not having a business, which is if you can't afford to tell your salesperson. So here's a question that don't let the, fun, the investor stump you on this question, which is what is OTE for your salespeople? So first, what is OTE? On target earnings, that is what you pay your salesperson when they make their quota. What is a quota, right? What, that is how much they need to sell in a year of your software, and basically there's a direct line between what they need to make and how much you can charge for your software and make sure all of that pencils out, right? So spend a lot of time as an entrepreneur convincing yourself, and the best way to convince yourself that you command the value that you believe you get is a PO. It's not metrics, metrics are great, but like show me the PO, right? Uh, purchase order for those that don't sell it to enterprise. Um, and just make sure that you've got a straight line connect the value that I can command with my awesome machine learning technology and what I can afford to pay a sales and marketing team to go scalably unlock that.